On August 2024, Rick Ross posted a video criticizing 50 Cent for not publicly siding with the West Coast during the highly publicized beef between Kendrick Lamar and Drake. At the height of the conflict, 50 posted a picture of himself and Drake, which Ross took as 50 not backing Kendrick and by proxy Dr. Dre, who played a huge part in the early portion of 50's music career. In the video, Ross said, I thought Dr. Dre put you on. I thought Dr. Dre was the set. I thought you was loyal to Dr. Dre. You mean you went with the Canadian over Dr. Dre? Who you, you say changed your life? He further went on to mention that once Drake lost the beef, 50 went silent. Ross's comments were triggered by 50 Cent's appearance on Million Dollars Worth the Game, during which 50 said that Ross was unable to get any attention unless he talked about 50. In the same episode, 50 Cent claimed that Ross was faking his boss lifestyle and was not as rich as he appeared to be. Ross responded by listing down some of the wealth he accumulated over the years. This exchange was another notch in the long-running beef between 50 and Ross which started in 2008. Earlier in 2024, Rick Ross was on the receiving end of a physical attack while in Vancouver, Canada. This was because, after his performance at the Ignite Music Festival, Ross walked off stage and walked through the crowd to Kendrick Lamar's Not Like Us playing in the background. This was an issue because the track, which was a diss song aimed at Canadian musician Drake, angered members of the crowd, one of whom threw the first punch causing a brawl to break out between Rosé's camp and the various members of the audience. Clips of the altercation circulated the internet and 50 Cent jumped at the opportunity to clown Rosé for taking an L publicly. He posted an Instagram reel in which he sarcastically said, Hey guys, you know, I just saw a, a very unfortunate situation that took place in Canada and I wanted to say to everyone, you know, that I hope that that brother made it home safely. I hope that uh, he now has a different perspective and a better sense of what to do and what not to do while you're out in the world. It was later confirmed that no one from Ross's team had been seriously injured during the incident and Ross shared a social media post laughing off the situation. Earlier in November of 2023, Rick Ross collaborated with Meek Mill to release their album Too Good To Be True, which got poor reviews and didn't perform as well as most of Ross's past albums. 50 Cent took jabs at Rick Ross by citing the low album sales which Rick brushed off. 50 tweeted, Oh no, 31,009? You might want to spend some quiet time to strategize and reevaluate. Rick went on to declare that at that point there was no reason for him and 50 to ever mend ties as the beef had gone on for far too long. He emphasized that his focus was on his various businesses and ventures which were a top priority in his life. In 2021, just as he was gearing up to release his 11th studio album, Richer Than I Ever Been, Rick Ross was interviewed by GQ magazine. In that interview, Rick took a dig at 50 Cent as he sarcastically mocked the amount that 50 supposedly made off his TV show BMF. Ross quit, I'm a real nigga. I could put my issues with 50 to the side. I know he may have made a quarter million off the whole season. I'm happy he made that quarter. Tell him I said congratulations. A year prior, 50 appeared on Lil Wayne's Young Money radio show during which he took a dig at Rick Ross, Meek Mill, and Jay-Z. 50 hit all three of his fellow MCs with the words. I stay away from certain shit because, look, if you said to me, I'm not even going to say who I'm talking about, right? Please don't. I'm just going to say... <laughs> If you represent prison reform, how did you sign to a correctional officer and you managed by a snitch? Rock Nation CEO Desiree Perez was the snitch being referred to as she was once a DEA informant. That same year, the question of who was the better musician came up at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, during which versus battles became a huge thing in the American music industry. Various matchups had been proposed and speculated by fans, one of which was 50 Cent versus Rick Ross due to their feud. When asked to comment on the possibility of seeing the matchup happen on the I Am Athlete podcast, Rick Ross questioned whether 50 stood a chance as Rick thought his music catalog was superior to 50's even though 50 had more commercial success. Ross admitted that 50's debut album Get Rich or Die Trying was explosive, but 5th didn't have much else after that as he was too reliant on a team to create hits. Would it be really entertaining music-wise, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm a, I'm a real dude, 50 Cent had some huge records when he had the biggest producers and artists around him putting them together. That's why right now he can't make nothing, he can't not to save his life. During the same interview, one of the hosts commented on Ross about the profitability of beef and mentioned that the diss tracks between Rosé and 50 were great marketing tools. He suggested that if the two exchanged diss tracks, it would be profitable to which Ross responded. Maybe not no more because he's no longer valuable in the music arena. 
Yeah. Maybe before I would wake up in the morning and shit on them and say something just to turn up the little vibe. You know, I'm gonna post some sh new shoes I got later. <laughs> Let me call him the, the monkey he is, you know, and that's what it was. <laughs> Straight up. This was a reiteration of a sentiment that Rick made about 50 Cent in 2019 when he stated that there was no value in collaborating with 50 Cent who was insignificant and had low value as a musician. While talking to Big Boy TV, Rosé said, Honestly, I'm a businessman. If 50 Cent still had value, I may have been done it. But not being funny, not on, homie right. just ain't, you know, he ain't that dude no more. Man, we was riding through LA smoking the hate or the love it yesterday. Rounds on time, was yeah. Dope. Game, 50 Cent, that was dope. If he was still making music like that, of course, one of my dogs could hit me, Drake could hit me, and say, Rose, I got 50 on the record. And if he was still dope like he was eight years ago, Rose, I laced that. That sentiment about having long musical value seemed to go both ways as 50 responded that Ross had become insignificant in the industry and was a one-trick pony whom he had no interest in collaborating with. The beef between these two men went beyond just musical or artistic competition as was demonstrated in 2018 when Rick Ross was hospitalized after being found in an unresponsive state at his home. The health scare resulted in an outpouring of well wishes from fans, celebrities, and musicians alike. Snoop Dogg tweeted, Prayers up for my guy Rick Ross. Hope you pull through, my brother. Missy Elliott posted, I believe in the power of prayer. Sending prayers up for Rick Ross. Gucci Mane also took to Twitter and posted, Everyone pray for my buddy Rick Ross to get well soon. 50 Cent, on the other hand, posted an image of the situation in an Instagram post with the caption, No comment, which fans took as shots at Ross's condition. The post was later deleted. This was not a big surprise to followers of 50 as he was known for being relentless when it came to his rivalries. Another well-documented example of his relentlessness was his beef with Ja Rule, whom he continued to mock two decades after their beef began. In a 2016 Rolling Stone interview, Rosé was asked about the status of his relationship with 50, to which he responded, At this point, my relationship with Curtis is really amusing, due to the fact that I'm the biggest L he ever took. Rick went on to express his displeasure with the way things were progressing in 50's life, stating, I'm not happy that his boxing company went under. I'm not happy that his clothing company went under. I'm not happy his record label went under. I'm not happy that he went bankrupt. I'm not happy that he doesn't have a relationship with his son. Rick's words made it sound like he believed that he was winning more in life as opposed to 50 who had undergone various challenges, including filing for bankruptcy after losing a revenge porn case against Rick Ross's ex-girlfriend. It was believed that 50 filed for bankruptcy to avoid paying the penalties for losing the case. The year prior, in 2015, Ross featured on the song Wingstop Remix, on which he dissed 50 Cent with the line, 50's financial woes, I never speak of them. Years ago, Pimp and Curly, we know we ethered them. At the Mayweather fight, I got my gun tucked, second row, and I'm smiling just like I'm young, but affiliating act for the public to watch Ross's ex having sexual relations on tape. On top of that, the tape contained commentary from 50 himself, so distancing himself from it may have been a challenge. Leviston claimed the tape was allegedly sold to 50 Cent by her ex-boyfriend Maurice Murray, and it caused her distress and made her suicidal once it became public. The tape, which was released in 2009, escalated what seemed like a simple hip-hop rivalry to a deep personal beef. A relentless 50 Cent took to Instagram in March of 2014 and posted a picture of Ross and Diddy, which implied that the two were leaning in to kiss. The image was captioned, I ain't saying nothing, but something ain't right, LMAO. However, the picture didn't stay up long as it was quickly deleted. This was not a shock as 50 also had a rocky relationship with Diddy, so the opportunity to take shots at two of his rivals at the same time was likely something he relished. Rosé brushed it off when he appeared on The Breakfast Club stating, I mean, was he in his pimp and curly mode? If he wasn't in pimp and curly, I, you know, I ain't really moved. Now, he, was, he was regular mode. Did you see the picture or no? You didn't see it? No, not at all. About. You know, we don't got time for that. We mm -hmm. went and checked the scoreboard. You know what I mean? We running the numbers up high. Other than that, put the wigs on first. That's when we enjoyed it and we laughed. Right. Put the wigs on, you know what I mean? Go back to that. Other than that, we gonna keep getting this money. In another Breakfast Club interview from 2013, Ross called the beef buffoonery and said he enjoyed the entertainment aspect of it. That same year, Ross released his eighth studio album titled Black Market. 50 Cent mocked the album's performance for low sales. 50 remarked, Black Market, F Jam, 34,000, is that a rock or a brick? He went on to suggest that 15,000 of the copies had been purchased by Ross or his label, meaning that the actual sales were even lower. 
He then proceeded to speak highly of his mixtape, The Canaan Tape, which was doing well in comparison to Rosé's album. In 2012, Rick Ross was interviewed by Kevin Tate, where he was asked about the beef between him and 50 Cent. He told the interviewer in an annoyed tone, Real niggas beef by pulling pistols. That's what beef is. Okay. I've never heard of a Rick Ross 50 Cent beef. Thereby dismissing that the rivalry was a street beef and was more of a music rivalry. He mentioned that the interview was the first time he had heard of beef between the two and that if there was a beef, he would have been on the internet talking about it every day. During the entire interview, Ross was visibly irritated as he implored the interview to do a better job as opposed to asking frivolous questions. The interview revealed that Ross was sour about the narrative concerning his relationship with 50 as Rosé thought the rivalry wasn't that deep. Just a few months prior, in 2011, Rick Ross suffered seizures which concerned the general public. For what might be the first time, during a 2011 interview with MTV, 50 Cent shared the sentiment that the situation with Rick Ross was a battle instead of a beef. 50 also acknowledged that he did not wish death on Ross. He went on further to state that the origins of their rivalry showed 50 that Ross was just being competitive, and so the situation was handled as such. It started because I looked at him the wrong way. That just means he wanted to compete, he wanted to move up, he wanted to create an awareness for himself, and he did it. Looking back at the early stages of the beef in 2009, Rick Ross released a diss track titled Kiss My Pinky Ring Curly. In the song, Ross attacked 50 by calling him a monkey, stating that 50 was gay and a fake gangster. Some of the lines in the song included, You was a monkey, you orangutan, locked up, I heard they call you Changalang, undercover f it's like homo, no steam, Jimmy got you doing promo, we laughing at your ad, and you dress so bad, we be laughing at your ad. Ross also made the accusation that Lloyd Banks wrote the hook for In The Club, which was 50's biggest hit. 50 Cent released a skit in which he wore a curly-haired wig and played a character called Pimpin' Curly. He used the skit to respond to Rick Ross in a comedic way. In a later interview with Power 105.1 FM, 50 explained that he responded as the Pimpin' Curly character because he believed laughter would help diffuse any issues that other people may have had upon finding out that Rosé worked as a correctional officer. Prior to things becoming deeply personal, the beef exploded into the public's awareness in 2009 when Rick Ross released his track titled Mafia Music, where he directed jabs at 50's financial and relationship issues between 50 and his baby mother. In the track, Ross said, I love to pay your bills, can't wait to pay your rent. Curtis Jackson, baby mama, I ain't asking for a cent. Burn the house down, you gotta buy another. Don't forget the gas can, jealous stupid motherfucker. The line about burning the house down alluded to a 2008 situation during which 50 Cent's home, which had been linked to domestic violence, had been burned down. 50's response was that he didn't know if Ross was serious or not about the song. 50 retaliated quickly to this with a diss track title Officer Ricky, Go Ahead Try Me. In the song, 50 tore down Ross's drug kingpin image by bringing to light that Ross had previously worked as a correctional officer, thereby making him a part of law enforcement. As law enforcement is the worst enemy of gangsters and drug dealers, the accusation took away from the believability of Rick's rhymes. Some of the lines in Officer Ricky state, Screaming boss, you ain't a boss, but be a loss. Listen Officer Ross, I tell you straight suck a d I'm trying to come with subliminals cause he asked the police. 50 went on to further state that Ross's career was done in the lines. Use a rapper, use a motherfucking rapper. It's a rap, your career is fucking wrapped up. Ross called the song garbage and insulted 50 for releasing what Rosé considered a weak response, especially for someone from New York where hip-hop was born. He went on to say that 50 had 48 hours to release a better song. The information about being a correctional officer was backed up by Ross's baby mother, Tia Kemp, who was interviewed face-to-face -face by 50 Cent in a video that was posted to thisis50.com. In the video, Tia claimed to have come across a resignation letter that Ross had submitted to his employer when he was stepping down from his correctional officer post. Tia stated that upon having questioned Ross, he denied ever performing such work. She also said that Ross was living a fake life as his jewelry was rented, his cars were leased, and he was being dishonest about the amount of money he was spending to keep up his high-profile lifestyle. In the same video, 50 pulled out a magazine and showed a picture of a lady named Brooke, who was working as a call girl and was allegedly another one of Rick Ross's baby mothers. The insults did not stop there as 50 showed a picture of Rick Ross and his mother and said he looked like the nutty professor. The violation continued as 50 showed a montage of him and Tia on a shopping spree during which he bought her a fur coat and called Rick Ross a sucker. The personal violations continued as 50 released a video in which he was seen taking photos and spending time with Rick's son and Tia Kim at Floyd Mayweather's house. 
According to Billboard, the initial diss tracks helped both artists with sales. Ross, who at the time had two albums under his belt, saw an increase in sales by 62%. 50 Cent's three albums saw an increase of 74%, which reinforced the idea that beef is good for record sales. Looking back to 2008, the beef which had a murky beginning was set off when 50 Cent and Rick Ross came across one another at the BET Awards. 50 Cent supposedly gave Rick Ross an unwelcoming facial expression which rubbed Ross the wrong way. Over the years, people have speculated whether Ross's decision to initiate the beef was just a publicity stunt to boost sales, since 50 Cent was one of the hottest artists at the time and he had a reputation for controversy. The unfriendly steer would remain unconfirmed as according to 50 Cent he did not recall the alleged BET Awards encounter that initiated the animosity. However, he did not back down from the conflict as it was not in his nature to do so. Looking back at it all, Rick Ross threw the first blow when he mentioned 50 in Mafia music. Rick Ross called into Angela Yee's Shade 45 show where he shared the reason why the beef began. Yee's response was one of surprise over the reason, but Ross doubled down that the encounter disappointed him and he went on to promote his then upcoming album Deeper Than Rap. Although Ross took the first shot, 50 Cent played his part in keeping the beef alive by never missing an opportunity to throw jabs at Ross. The illusion that the beef was indeed a ploy by Rose's label to market music was made by 50 when he said, your company, the system might actually feel like it's a good idea for the moment until they realize that I won't stop. There's nobody in control of me. Like, I do what I want to do. So, I'm deciding to fuck your life up. Rick, bro, I'm going to fuck your life up. For fun. There's a few times. I'm, I, this is not new. I do this all the time. Like, I had a list of 50 Cent had a long track record of getting into issues with people. His 1999 song, How to Rob, which was his first notable single, ignited controversy among his fellow peers in the music industry. His song, Ghetto Quran, is allegedly part of the reason he got shot nine times. So, beef and controversy have frequently been tools that 50 Cent used to market himself. The jabs and shots between the two continued to rage on for years as each one never missed the chance to diss or slight the other whenever the opportunity came up. Between the two MCs, 50 embraced and leaned into the beef more as he seemed to relish in his rival's misfortune. Ross, on the other hand, attempted to broker peace, but to no avail. The constant back and forth resulted in one of the longest running conflicts in hip hop and based on 50's track record and his repeated refusal to broker peace, the beef may have no expiry date which is in line with what 50 said in 2009 when he declared that he won't stop.